something was going to happen. Something wonderful. Jeepers, creepers. G'day, everybody, and welcome to the show on this Freedom Night. Ange has already joined us. Ange, get out of the house. Five people are with us already. What is wrong with you people? Where the restrictions have been lifted, you can get out on the town and see puppies, see dudes. And uh, well, I tell you what, there's something wrong with us. Nerds wanting to stay inside and just watch the three of us wrap it on. Unbelievable. Anyway, how are we all tonight? I hope we're having a really, really good time. We have no any, ha, no idea how many people are going to be joining in to watch us, but we've got seven already, and that is absolutely fantastic. Before I go any further, I've got to say hello to my lads. Uh, Jeffro and MPS, how are we going tonight? Going very well. Uh, good to hear you guys have got a little bit of taste of freedom, so that's uh, been really nice to uh, to see. MPS? Yeah, well, I, I tasted some of that freedom, and I want to go back in my house because nerds and sunshine don't mix. And there's too many people out and about. I like I like going around the shopping centres when there's no one there. I love that. You know, the shops can be open, that's fine, but or shut, I don't care. Um, but, yeah, it's just too many people. All right, so let's move on to our uh, next discussion. Now, this is something I was thinking about just recently. Um, <clears throat> it's like movies with multiple versions, right? Now, just to give you a bit of background as to where this is all, what this is all coming from. So back in the day, you have a movie that gets released and effectively, aside from different language versions, you know, because it went to different places, and maybe there could be versions where, oh, they didn't like the violence, so they cut bits out, you know, in different countries and all that sort of stuff. There used to just be one version of a movie in general, right? We're talking about you know, right from the beginning of the film genre right through to, let's say, the 70s, for example, as a, as a guess. And, um, but, and then, of course, somewhere along the way, a TV version would get created when movies started airing on TV. And for whatever reason, there might be a TV version. Once again, the violence and the swearing would be cut out. Exorcist was a good example of that. They just chopped out shitloads from that. Even Scarface got bloody sliced to pieces. They tried to make a TV version out of that. Um, and then uh, we got into video in the 80s. But prior to that, um, uh, I was going to bring this up. I mean, about Superman and Superman 2 having their TV versions where all the deleted scenes were put back in. And that was something new, unique and different, something you didn't sort of normally see. It's like normally it's just a theatrical version put on TV and away you go. And, of course, Star Wars went through a bit of a change when it got uh, released from 77 through a couple of years later when they put in the title A New Hope and made a few other changes with them in the movies itself. But I personally think um, that uh, variations of films hit their stride in the 80s with VHS videotapes. And I think off the top of my head, Aliens, was one of the first, if not the first, to have an extent, an official extended edition where they added in all this extra material that was not there previously. And, of course, the logic behind it is to sell more videotapes, right? So it's been out in the cinemas, it's come, it's gone, it's all done and dusted. How do you resell the product? Stick more bits in, have the extended edition. And I think every man and his dog went nuts over watching that. But the question I've got to ask, and one of the things that I want to bring up, is movies that have had special editions extended editions director's cuts ultimate cuts and it's like which and of course the original theatrical release which one do you watch and why and is the extended version all the when i say extended that's all the um, variations are they actually better than the theatrical version in the first place i mean what's the benefit of watching some of these things so um and there's a lot i actually made a bit of a list here. there's actually quite a long list too but uh, what do you guys think i mean do extended versions of anything sort of really float your boat or uh, you think some of them are a bit questionable? I got, the, you're ready. <laughs> I got the Supergirl DVD, which has the extended version of Supergirl. So uh, the movie itself goes for 124 minutes. That was the original theatrical version. And then the director's cut goes for 138 minutes. Mm. So, and the problem with it, and I, I did, I noticed this last time I was watching it was, I can't tell what the extra bits are because I never watch it that often because I need I never had it on on uh, DVD or anything like that or video. It only when it was released, the, the special version about six or seven years ago that I got it that I even knew there was an extended version. So I just started watching that and I've never really watched the original theatrical version again. Mm. I um I I did some digging on the internet and believe it or not, 
the first example of where this can actually be said that there's a special edition goes back to uh, a 1925 movie of Charlie Chaplin's The Gold Rush. So what happened is that it was a silent movie. And then when, um, of course, sound came out, he actually went back and added sound and narration. And he cut out some of the scenes that he didn't like, like the kissing scene at the end. And then he released his own special edition uh, in the cinemas again. Yeah, I, I, I get that. And there are examples of where that occurred. Uh, and I didn't want to sort of bring that up specifically because that's not really current to today. But I know where you're coming. Like Metropolis, the uh, different countries cut up Metropolis in different ways and were shown in different versions, right? So, um, but yeah, right, things change between silence and talkies and there were examples where they went back and reshot stuff and whatever else. So the key thing I'm thinking about is that you've got two ways of looking at it from extended versions of movies. One, where they just get old scenes and put them back in or where there are special editions and they go reshooting new stuff. Uh, and in Aliens, they just put back in all the deleted scenes. Um, mm. And same with Superman and Superman 2 with the TV versions, uh, whereas, say, with Star Wars, the special editions, they went and shot new material. And it's interesting to see what people are saying <clears throat> out here. And you're right, uh, Daniel, about Blade Runner. There's like five, seven different versions of Blade Runner. So which one do you, do you watch and why would you watch it? Which is the one that works for you the most? And I think it's a sort of an – sorry, Jeffrey, are you going to say something? Yeah, actually, uh, I was in my research. I found out that the uh, director's cut for Blade Runner, which was the uh, working print of the first film, mm. yep. was actually just put out for marketing, and Ridley Scott didn't really care. But it was actually the studio that sort of uh, exploited that. Mm. So I thought that was interesting. Mm. Cool. Um, like Colin has said, he's a big fan of director's cuts, and I think by and large most people are. But I think it's funny that you'll end up with a film that came out in a theatrical release, you got used to it, and then suddenly they've added there's a new release that's come out with extra bits. And is it automatically assumed that the extended version of something is the best version, right? Yeah. And I think when you sit and think about it, the answer is not necessarily the cut and dry. And I can give you examples of where I'm coming from. But there are definitely versions when they are extended are much better. Mm -hmm. um, so is, are there, have you guys got anything that you sort of want to bring up regarding that? Yeah, I know that... Um uh, quite often it's the violence that was cut out. So in the 70s and 80s, a lot of it was cut out. So when you, we did get to see re the restored version, it actually made a lot more sense to the uh, the storyline. So I appreciate the fact that when they put that extra stuff in, it does make uh, things uh, coherent. And a good example of that was um, uh, the movie Event Horizon. That is a very violent and bloody scene where they go to hell and it was all cut out. And nobody can understand the story. And um, unfortunately, those um, clips have never resurfaced. So uh, it just means that we'll never get to see the way it was intended. And um, Total Recent had a, had a version. It was the R-rated version. The theatrical version was not R-rated. But I got given a copy of it on video as it was in the theatre. And the only difference was there was that one scene that they were on the escalators uh, and he grabs the guy and the guy gets shot up massively. And that was the only difference, I think, in the film that made it an R-rated film. Um, so there's a few comments that have come through here. Uh, I agree with you, Kelvin. The Lord of the Rings is a very good example of an, an extended version, which is far superior to the theatrical version, especially in the Two Towers, where you have the Saruman stuff added in at the end, which was cut out of the theatrical release, right? Uh, which was a significant scene. So Saruman doesn't appear until The Return of the King. And yet he had a very, very important scene at the end of Two Towers. So that's an example where it has worked very, very well. And I think any Lord of the Rings uh, aficionado will say, oh, yeah, the extended versions are definitely the way to go. Uh, I know Daniel's mentioned about the extended version of Dune, uh, which is uh, fair enough, even though they sort of had to rush the production of it a little bit. But it does actually, they added in a lot more deleted scenes and refilmed some extra bits to make that sort of work the way they did. Um, the Vial has mentioned that Alien... So Alien was interesting. So they added in more stuff where they showed a bit more of the Alien more than anything else, um, uh, which I thought was actually quite intriguing. And he's made a mention about the the Absis. And of course, the main thing with the Absis, the Abyss, is the end of it uh, when the when the when the ship actually rises to the top of the surface. So I think they cut that out originally, but they put that back in for the special edition, which was quite interesting. And of course, with Close Encounters, you start you got to see the inside of the Alien ship at the end, which was originally missing from the theatrical so version. Did, uh with Close Encounters, that was the first recognised movie that used the word special edition. So when mm. they came out, uh, they actually called it special edition. So that's the first example of that. Yeah, no, I did actually forget that, actually. So thanks for bringing that up. Um, yeah, so Colin, they haven't actually released the version yet where the Biggs and um, Luke scenes and, and all the Toshi Station stuff has been um, 
uh, put back in, and it's probably a good thing that they never did that. Uh, Lord of the Rings, spin of those things. Yeah, this is oh, you beat me to it, Kelvin. You've sort of stolen my thunder. I was going to leave this right to the very end, but the director's cut of Picnic and Hanging Rock is actually shorter. I mean, that's a pretty rare thing when they actually cut bits out rather than put bits in. And uh, where are we? Um, Tom, I said that, uh, yeah, there's actually three hours extra. Yeah, well, in the end, it's 12 hours worth of movies. So uh, it's, it's a hell of a lot there that they cut out. I mean, that's a lot to take out for the theatrical versions, that's for sure. So, um, yeah, good old Robocop did actually have two versions. So the story with Robocop in the 80s is that they, uh, to try and meet their rated R version, because you've got rated X as our rated R in the US, they cut out all the swearing and the violence and they actually cut too much out. And then in the video version, they put it all back in again, So, which was um, the way it should have been. So there you go. And, uh, and Tomo doesn't agree that uh, Lord of the Rings, well, I think you're in the minority there. Uh, uh, Tomo, I think most people would say that the extended version of Lord of the Rings is actually the way to go. So um, it's not just what I'm saying. It's what most people are saying. So, But they were. But by the same token, extended versions sometimes are extended when they didn't need to be. And they can actually add things in. You go, you know what? I could see why they cut those out in the first place. So going back to Aliens, Aliens is a great example of this, right? So at the start of the film, you get the whole thing with Ripley and her daughter has grown old and died while she was in high hypersleep, right? And so you can see why she had the connection to Newt, right? There's a whole link there that is just completely missing from the theatrical version. But in the ship, on the actual thing itself, they've got the sentry guns, the great scene with the sentry guns. It's great and wonderful, and it explains why the aliens crawl up through the roof, but it's just long. And it's drawn out. And you go, you know what? From pacing purposes, I can see why they cut that out. So from a completist point of view, you could say, yes, I would watch the extended version. But if I want a movie I can still enjoy and it's faster paced, maybe the theatrical version is the one to go with. So that's, I think, is actually quite interesting. What do you guys reckon? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it was interesting because when Aliens came out, uh, I don't think James Cameron had uh, say on the final cut. So the final cut is what, uh, gets released and some directors get pre-approval to say, well, I'm not releasing it until I think that's good. But uh, certainly a lot of directors don't have that, not the powerful ones. And the, if the studio doesn't like anything, they will chop things out. So I think that's the reason why we got the extra 20 minutes is because Cameron uh, suddenly got that opportunity because his, um, uh, his pull was uh, much greater that he could say, well, I want to see it put back in and it did get put back in because i think one of the most annoying things you can have is when you've got a movie that you love then they produce an extended version mm -hmm. right and you go okay great i got the senior bits then there's another version on top of that and blade runner i think is like the ants pants of version it's like that is complete rubbish there's like five or six versions of the same movie and it's just like i'm gonna watch it so well which one do i watch it's like do i do i say the extended version is better than the director's cut which is better than the ultimate edition it is, it is ridiculous and i think there's clearly a marketing point of view. It's not necessarily because they say, oh, the fans are going to love it. They're doing it, oh, because we can sell more DVDs, more Blu-rays, get people back in the cinemas, all that sort of stuff. It's a gimmick thing, right? Um, and then you can argue, does it enhance the story? Is it actually beneficial to what it is you're trying to watch? And in some cases, most cases, it works. Now, an example where it went completely ass about was in E.T., for the 30th anniversary of E.T., right? They said, oh, yeah, it's all politically correct now. Oh, the gun, the, they're chasing the kids. The police are carrying guns. Let's remove the guns and put in walkie-talkies. And the fans went they went nuts, batting, okay. edit that out. They went absolutely nuts. And they said, you can't do that, right? Don't just change it because of the political correct shit. Put, leave it back the way it was. And they eventually re-released it again, putting the guns back in the hands of the police officers. And that's a good example of where making a change for the wrong reason didn't work. And, uh, and I remember people just, and like, as a viewer, you'd be going, well, who cares? Either way, guns, walkie-talkies, what's the diff? But the fact was it was changing something that did not need to be changed. And I think that's a good example where um, uh, make doing it for the wrong reason uh, can really backfire on you. Sorry for the bad language. I think just cut that out. <laughs> so in, in the movie Triple X with Vin Diesel where he's, a, he's brought in to be a, a, a CIA operative um, and he's an extreme um, skateboarder and all that sort of stuff, the original version, they had him happily ever after on the beaches of Bora Bora at the end of the first film. And then he did come back for the sequel. So they brought in uh, someone else to do the sequel. And then they released the DVD version of the first film again with him dying at the end so they could justify bringing in a new guy to play the triple X role. And then they re-released the version where he's alive again because he comes back to do triple X three. So mm -hmm. a whole, a whole set of DVD, you know, a whole series of DVDs that you didn't need to do. And, I don't know. 
just didn't make any sense to me. See, I can understand if I'm sorry, you, do you want to say something, Jeffro? No, I was just thinking it's the, the entire uh, who shot first scenario. See, I can understand if you have a movie that failed in the first place, right? And I, they've got a classic example I'm going to bring up, right? I completely sucked the big one and when it got released. Everybody hated it. It didn't work. And you release an extended version, you change a few bits just to see it work. Alien 3 is a perfect example of that, right? The theatrical version of Alien 3 was shit, right? It Compared to the other two, it just died a death, right? Anybody would argue with that. So they actually produced a special edition version of it and they actually changed a lot of the concepts around. So as an example, the alien doesn't actually come out of a dog. It comes out of an ox. Right, so it's not just a we'll add a few deleted scenes back in. We'll actually change a few things around. And as it turned out, the director's cut was actually the better version to watch of Alien Three and made it a better movie, not as good as Aliens and Alien, but still it was an improvement, right? But of course, by then the damage is done. People have said oh, Alien Three sucked. Don't want to watch it, regardless of which version it is, right? So I can understand it from that point of view where you got something that sort of died a death in the beginning, and you go, you know what? All right, let's just try something else. With Close Encounters, for example, as I was mentioned earlier, it was just like, well, we missed these bits. Everybody's seen the movie. Let's just show a bit more just because you can. And But I think that was more of a marketing thing than anything else. Um, and, of course, that then brings us all back to the TV versions. Like Superman and Superman 2, they are – look, all this stuff is just added back in. I mean, Superman 3 went for three hours. If you record it on a VHS videotape without the commercials like I did, the moment the end credits finish, the tape runs out, right? And you go, why didn't we see this in the cinemas? Because all this stuff is put back in, and some of it is really, really, really good. Um, and in the end, I think a lot of people sort of really gravitated to that and said, oh, no, if you watch the DVD of Superman, it's just like, hang on, where's the bit of this and where's the bit of that and where's the bit? It's all deleted scenes. And I think the TV versions in this instance, for those two films in particular, were actually superior to the theatrical version. What do you guys reckon? <clears throat> I, I think that... Uh back in the good old days timing in the cinemas was everything so yeah they really frowned upon movies going more than two hours you know mm. um i remember the sessions being 11 to 5 and 8 so they're on three hour blocks and you had to give enough time for mm. people to clear out clean out the popcorn and all that so the idea of having like a three hour uh, movie uh was absolutely unheard of but of course things change and you know we're now seeing uh, these really long movies that, um, like the Avengers movies, come out uh, with those uh, really long running times. When they do that, they want to have like 90 minute films so they can push people through in and out, in and out, in and out. Remembering that back in the in the 80s, and, and I'm not sure about the 70s, because I think the first film I saw in the cinemas was Superman 2, maybe. Uh, but there was only two cinemas at the Knox Knox Complex. Now you've got multi cinemas, you know, there's there's ten or twelve cinemas plus your gold class. They can chuck on like they do now with midnight sessions of Star Wars. They can throw on a midnight screening in the in the big V Max there at Knox and then they have three other screenings and gold class screenings. You know, it's not you can run two or a very popular film in two cinemas rather than just um, also at Doncaster back in the back until about ten years ago. So it was only two cinemas. So you had to be in and out of of it yep. as quick as you could no you're right theatrical releases back then they didn't want them to go more than two hours because the they needed to get the the screenings in completely correct now i'm glad the vial has brought this up the wrath of khan right so the extended version of the wrath of khan okay they added bits in and the key one is the fact that uh if you know the movie well enough scotty's nephew is the one who dies right i mean he gets introduced when they get on the ship and you see him here peter preston sorry not i first met place class midship whatever it's scotty's nephew but you don't know that in the theatrical version right in the extended version they actually show yes he's scotty's nephew that's the reason why he carries him onto the bridge and he's dead but the funny thing about the wrath of khan and i could not fathom this right now that you guys would have been in the same situation you know some movies so well that when even one thing has changed mm. you pick up on it you know something's like hang on what's wrong with this picture and if you yeah. know the sequence on regular one well, all the scientists are on a regular one there's a change if something is wrong and if you know the movie well enough like i did you can be watching thing and hang on the actors are saying the same lines they're the same characters, but something is incorrect. And what they've done is they've used alternative takes, right, from the film. So instead of using take three, they've gone to take five, right? So the actors are delivering the dialogue slightly differently, right? And the reason why they've done that is say, like, well, in the theatrical version, they may have sort of like gone five lines, edit to this guy, and the next lines continue on, whereas they want all of it you know, in one shot. And I found that to be really, really difficult to sort of swallow. And it really turned me off because I'm thinking, hang on, it doesn't sound right. What's changed? And then I read about it afterwards, and they said, oh, no, we've just used an alternative take. I go, why would you do that? 
I can understand adding in extra bits to fill in the story and the characters and all the rest of it, but changing existing takes, it's like, how cockeyed is that? So um, that's I'm glad the vial brought that one up. I reckon that's um, just bizarro. So uh, there you go. Um, I agree with you, Michelle. It doesn't matter what version it is if you're enjoying but we're talking about what happens when there's more than one version. There's Like, which one do you pick? You've got to say, I've got some friends over to watch them. Now you can have friends. I've got some friends that come over to watch some DVDs. Oh, I've got this movie. There's three copies of the versions of this. There's six versions of that. There's two versions of this. And they're going to go, well, which one do I watch? You know, and then why? And the last thing you want is to put on an extended version of something for someone who's never seen it before. And they go, it's too long. I didn't like it. It was drawn out. And then they discover the theatrical version, which was the successful one, is the one they should have stuck with because it's great to see the extra bits, but does it make the film better? And that's the key thing. What do you reckon, fellas? Well, I do remember one movie that was um, savagely cut and it failed big time at the box office and they put it all back in for the, uh, the DVD release and it made it so much better, but, of course, the damage was done, and that's uh, the movie Daredevil that had uh, Ben Affleck. Yeah. So yep. you um, you really do feel grateful when pressure's put on to be able to say, well, we know it failed. Uh, come on, let's let's see what was intended. Well, the thing with Daredevil, and I have covered this off before, the director's cut that got released was the original version, right? It was the studios who ordered it to be recut, cut it, shorten it down, put more action scenes back in it, and they got released and the film just tanked. Everybody hated it, right? But the director's cut is the actual one that got presented to the studio. Right, so they they're the ones who destroyed their own product, and, and the directors are like saying, "Why? This, it's ready to go. It's complete. It's good to go." No, so that's actually a bit of a bad example of like when the studios get involved. There's also the situation is when you make a change to a story with an extended version, you actually change a key concept. Uh, I can think of two examples. Uh, one was Star Trek Six, The Undiscovered Country, and the other one I think was Red Planet. Right now, in Star Trek Six, if you remember the movie well enough, at the scene you have got the Klingon who tries to assassinate the Chancellor, right? And they, uh, the heroes, turn up to save the day, and the Klingon dies, and all the rest of it, right? You think in the theatrical version, it's the Klingon who tried to shoot the Chancellor. In the extended version, you find it's a human being wearing Klingon makeup, right? And you can tell because it's got the red blood. I think the character's name is Colonel West, right? So they take changes yeah. the spin on everything. So it wasn't the Klingons, the bastard Klingons. It was actually a person, a human being, dressed as a Klingon. Right, and in the theatrical version, when you see the dead dude, you see the red blood, but then they cut away. Right, so that's changing a core concept of what the story was about, and that opens up a whole lot of debate as to saying, well, why was a human dressed as a Klingon trying to assassinate the Chancellor? What's the deal with that? And the theatrical version had that cut out. And in Red Planet, if I've got this mistake, now I only saw this once. This was a very, very long time ago. You got two dudes on a cliff, right, and a dude accidentally falls off, right, uh, and I think it was in a deleted scene uh, that showed that the guy actually pushed the dude off. Right, so it wasn't actually accidental at all. It was actually a murder. He actually pushed him off. He went, and I thought, shit, that's actually that's a major change to the story. So, uh, um, so you do wonder. So, if you showed someone, say, go back to Star Trek Six, the theatrical version versus the extended version, and they go, oh, those, and, and, you, and, and they've never seen it before, and they get to the end of it, and they go, these bloody Klingons, man, they're a pain in the ass. They're trying to shoot the dude. Oh, hang on, in this version, I don't know, it wasn't the Klingons at all. It's the humans who did it. It's like, what the hell's the idea with that? So. Uh, Hey, hey, hey. What do you reckon, fellas? I noticed that in the 89 Batman that they took out one tiny little piece from the theatrical release to the to the DVD or the video release even. That was when he's putting the, the, the suit on for the final battle with the Joker. And he actually puts the symbol on. And you don't see that later on. You know, the video and DVD don't have that. And for years I was trying to find a, a copy of that one thing. And I found it as a gift. Um, and it actually is, yeah, putting which locks the suit into place. But that, and the problem with that is every time I watch it, I do that little scene in my head. So I actually add to the film. Otherwise, it feels like it's wrong because every other, every other film that they did, when they're suiting up for the final battle, you see them with the cape and the boots and the zips and all that sort of stuff. Um, thank you, Greg. Yes, he too was confused, as was I, because they made such a thing about having pink blood for Klingons and then suddenly there's red blood for a Klingon. You go, what's the deal with that? Yeah, so he wasn't the only one who um, was questioning that as well. Uh, and, of course, and for those who didn't know in Star Wars, when they did the re-release for A New Hope for uh, the 978, whatever it was, release, and um, they put the New Hope in the title, um, in the sequence when you've got um, – they're checking out the tractor beam and you've got the flashing of all the graphics, right? 
that's like a cheeky 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 and you go that's a long long shot of just cheeky 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 well in the original version c-3po says and i couldn't believe when i saw heard this he says oh yes the tractor beam is controlled by multiple terminals switch off one switches them all off but that was removed for whatever reason in the re-release and i remember sitting in the cinema going oh shit i don't remember that that's the reason why that scene is so long and why ben kenobi gets to switch off one tractor beam and the whole thing shuts down so I thought that was actually quite interesting. Um, cinema, I'd like to take no acting part of that. If, if I take part in that, it will take there's a few buttons next to your drink. Uh, multiple endings, yeah. Multiple endings is a different sort of thing, and there are movies that do it as a joke, and there are some movies that do it intentionally. You know, you can have the Blu ray and you can say, Well, this is an ending, and there's this ending, and this ending. Um, I would argue that there's certainly something to be said about just having one version of a movie, and that's it, but some extended versions uh can have some benefits and i'll just run through a couple here so star trek the motion picture they did do a director's cut of that with robert wise and they did a fantastic job with it added in extra visual effects and made it look like it was 1970s so i gotta say if you're going to watch a version of motion picture the director's cut is definitely the one to go for right it's just it's just really really well crafted um thx 1138 there's a director's cut of that george lucas would made that of course well worth checking out i haven't seen it for a long time but of the two that's the one that i would pick uh because it actually added in stuff and it looks um it's easy to follow um terminator 2 of course had a lot of stuff added in uh it does drag the film out a bit but it does make it a bit more interesting to watch um dark city dark city is a bit like blade runner where it had all the voiceover than theatrical release they removed it for the director's cut well worth checking out and that's the version i think of the two that is if you've never seen dark city before I'd go with the director's cut of that. Uh, now, Legend, right? Now, Legend was, a, you know, the Ridley Scott movie. Absolutely love the director's cut, but they had a really gruesome scene put in the middle, right down the back of a dude chopping up another dude who's still alive, and I thought, that's it, I'm not watching that one again. So that just ruined it for me, so I don't know why that was included. Um, the director's extended version of Ghost Rider is really, really good. It was the first version I saw, and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, but, of course, using um, some backward logic, uh, extended versions of Metropolis are good, but they make the thing a lot longer than it needs to be. So sometimes getting a cut-down version, the 2003 version is the one that I would go with if you're going to watch Metropolis from 1927. Um, now, I've got one other thing I'm going to ask. Is there anything you two want to add in before we sort of, like, get ready to wrap this up? Yeah, I saw the uh, original uh, Michael Cimino movie, The Heaven's Gate, and then I mm. saw the uh, uh, extended edition, and uh, basically I just felt that um, both were disappointing. So... You know, you can add something in, but don't expect it to make it better. So my question is, in the movies that we've seen or talked about and all the rest of it, which version, and there is one in particular, where the theatrical version is better than the extended version? What do you guys think the answer to that question? What would you, if, is there one that you go, you know what, I would pick the theatrical version over all the other versions without him blinking my eyes? Yeah, good question. Yeah, I, I don't know. I... It depends. Yeah, it depends. Like the original Close Encounters, that that would be my pick. Okay. Whatever you do. Yeah, I don't know. I can't think of a. Um, the only one I could think of. Uh, see, I was going to say A New Hope or Empire, but the extended versions of both of those actually, I think they enhance them a little bit. You know, even the Empire one where it has only a few bits and pieces, but. You know, the scene when they're on Bespin and, and Leia and and Lando are running away from the stormtroopers and the backgrounds are all filled in. I think that makes it better, uh, you know, because it was lacking that little bit. Um, but I can't think of any other one that would be theatrically better. Well, aside from E.T., because of the aforementioned changes where they took out the walkie-talkies and put them whatever, E.T., the original version of that, you wouldn't, uh, you'd go back to it. And I agree with Spank and he's my choice, Star Wars. There is absolutely nothing wrong with the original version of Star Wars. And I think once you've got to the special edition, you know, and you watch it a few times and you go, you know what, give me the original any day of the week. And I think that's a classic example. In retrospect, at the time in 1997, it was a bit of a big deal. But in retrospect, you look back at it and you go, you know what, there was nothing wrong with the original version. I'd stick with that, right? The 77 release of A New Hope, done. And and uh, the Spank, um, who was it? Uh, the Vile has mentioned Empire. I can't even remember the special edition of version of Empire. Uh, so uh, with the extra 1%, there was nothing wrong with Empire. Empire was hugely successful as is. I mean, sure, they put the windows in for Cloud City and then that was all really, really cool. But by the same token, it's not like you're sitting there watching the movie in 980 going, you know what, 
there really needs to be some windows there. You know, I'm, 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 it's, I'm losing it because there's no windows, right? So I would argue that with the original Star Wars movies, particularly in New Hope, that the original theatrical releases is the way to go. And, uh, and I think that's uh, kind of interesting when you look at other extended versions, which are actually quite superior. So, uh, yeah, particularly the, uh, particularly the Jabba the Hutt scene just was not needed. Yeah, totally agree. Yep, mm. very good. So there you go. Even Catherine, hang on, I've lost, got to press a button down here. And Catherine agrees. Yep, Star Wars totally agrees. It's kind of funny how that works, isn't it? So the original is often the best, and that's the way to go. And I think maybe with some of these other movies, there's no, in the end, if a film is successful, the theatrical release, it does, it's great that they can make extended versions, but it's not like you need them. I mean, the theatrical version worked for a reason. Even Blade Runner, with all the voiceover from Harrison Ford, a lot of people didn't like it, but at the time we didn't know any different, and you just accepted it, and you go, you know what? It works for me, and I think there's a lot to be said about that, So, uh, which I think is actually quite interesting. So there you go. Very good. All right. That was a bit of an interesting sort of gurgle, wasn't it? So, yeah, it was uh, good. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I think Kelvin took my wind out of my sails. I was going to finish off by saying, oh, by the way, the director's cut of picking a hanger rocker shorter. Yeah, it's the only one where they cut shit out rather than putting shit in. So uh, there you go. There we go. And even Sue cried. I'm not too sure who Sue is, but g'day, Sue. How you going? Uh, yes, Jabba was awful. Absolutely fantastic. So there you go. Even though at the time people thought it was the bees and these, but uh, I don't know. Um, his, um, time hasn't been very kind to it. What can I say? All right, we're going to buzz off. Everybody's posting all this stuff now. We're all in the zone, but we do actually have to finish up because it's the end of the night. So uh, be sure to stay safe. Get out. Enjoy yourselves. Enjoy the weather. And we will see you on Saturday, 8 o'clock, Halloween show. You know you want to. Uh, party harder, rock on, and in the interim, make sure you ah, stay nerdy. Uh -huh. okay. Bye. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>